Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this session, we are going to perform learning assignment 16 where we are going to look into how actually we use Graph Explorer to design and validate our Graph API query. So let's jump into the Graph Explorer. So guys, to access the Graph Explorer, we have to visit this site developer.microsoft.com en-us Graph, Graph Explorer. And over here, once we reach there, then we will get many of the options to access the resources from the Microsoft 365. But prior to that, we have to sign in. Sign in with our credentials. So let's do it. So this is our credential which we have created when we were setting up our tenant. So I am going to use this one. So now I am logged in. For my case, I haven't provided any kind of credential because I have already been provided. For your case, it must be asking for the credential so you can provide it. So guys, to work with Graph API, this is the first place you must have to start with. So in the Graph Explorer, you will find the actions what kind of action you want to perform, where you want to perform. This is the endpoint where you have to specify. For this case, it is showing that me endpoint. Me means the current logged in user. So once you click on run query, now it has returned the status 200. So that means the request was successful and it has provided the response. Along with that, it is also giving us the code snippet. So over here, you can grab the code snippet for different different languages. For example, if you are working with any of the application which is designed on C-Sharp, you can use this code. If you are working with JavaScript, you can grab the code for the JavaScript. Same for the Java, then you will get the Go code and you can also look into the PowerShell code. So all these things it is also providing. So this is about the me object. So now the next question over here is how do you access a different kind of endpoint for different product? Now you will see it over here. You are getting many kind of endpoint within this. For example, if you want to know about the compliance, then there is this is the beta part of it. That means it is going to be released and it is in the phase of beta testing. You will see that for the product Excel, such kind of endpoint it has given. For example, if you want to get the worksheet information from your Excel online, then you can easily do with this endpoint. Then we are having the endpoint for different product like Microsoft Teams where you can get the information about team and over here you will see that it has given us many options. You can check that what kind of query it is making. If you will select any of this query, then you will find that it is giving us this particular endpoint. So you can jot it down these endpoints. Then you will see that suppose if you want to create any channel, so what kind of request you have to perform that is a post request and you will see that what kind of query it is making. So it is making this query over here. What it is doing? It is hitting this endpoint and in the request body, it is specifying the name. What is the display name they want for the channel and the description? Because whenever you are hitting any kind of a REST API, you must have to provide request body because some of the HTTP query expect the request body, which I have already explained in our earlier session. For this particular case, we are performing post operation and post operation is expecting some of the parameter at this particular endpoint because when you are sending oh create this channel so what channel it is asking that okay the name of the channel is being architecture discussion and over here which we are specifying this parameter called display name along with that we are passing the description as well so guys these are some of the sample queries you can also check the resources what are the resources available you will see that there are many resources available over here like application template audit chat communication directory role so all these are available over here so guys now let's discuss about how we are going to design our query for our case we are going to look into the sharepoint related endpoint because those are the endpoint we are going to use in our service layer which we are going to design in our upcoming session so how do you will get the endpoint query so you need to go inside the sample queries and over here there is something called sharepoint list if you come down, then you will find that there is something called SharePoint lists over here. And when you click on it, then you will find some of the samples for your usage. For example, if you want to grab the information, how many number of lists exist inside your root site. So if you click on it, then it will return you the number of lists inside your root site. And you will see that this is the output it has returned. And you will closely observe that it has returned that 
there is a list called shared documents as it is a document library and document library is another form of list only so that the reason it has returned the shared documents so it has returned whatever the list which is existing inside your root site collection so what is root site collection if you remember that we have configured our tenant and when we configured it it has given us this particular url and this is our root site collection now the question over here is so how we can access the other site collection apart from the root site collection with the help of graph query so let's look into that how we will do that over here first you will look into that how it is accessing the root site collection so basically it is hitting this graph.microsoft.com and then it is providing which resource we want to access we want access the sites resource and then there we are telling that from where we want the list from the root site collection but this time we want to access spfx exercises root site collection if you remember that for our practice purpose we have created a site collection called spfx exercises and there we have created a sharepoint list that is event registration and that is what we wanted to grab it so how we will get the information from that particular list so let's look into that how to designing the query i wanted to show you that list which we want to access so let me open that i need to come over here i, I will type spfx exercises and this is our list and this is what we wanted to access through the graph api and for that we are making the query so how we will do that let's look into that we need to grab this particular url so let me grab it so i will grab it from this place to this place copy this one and i will paste it somewhere so i will paste it over here in the notepad and now i will proceed further next we need to grab the id of the list so how we will grab it we need to go inside the list setting you should click over here and over here in the url you will see that this is giving us this id so we need to grab it till over here just copy this one and go back to your notepad and over here we will paste it but make sure that you are going to remove this percentage 7b and percentage 7d this is for the curly braces reference which is an encoded form we are interested with this id this is our list id we are going to use this id when we write the graph api query to grab the information from the list so now we have grabbed the url as well as list id so let's design our graph query so to do that i need to come back and i will grab this particular url copy this one and go back to notepad and paste it over here i will grab this particular url and paste it and over here i will come i will grab till this url and instead of root i will replace it with this particular url once it is being done then next i need to remove this part and then i will write colon over here I will specify colon and then I will write this particular name which is our site collection name once it is being done then I need to specify the list id so how I will specify the list id again I will put colon over here and put the slash and then we will specify our list id so how we will specify we need to write lists slash then we need to tell our id so grab this particular id copy this one and paste it over here and from this list i want all the items so for that i am going to tell items and i want to grab all the field for that i need to write expands equal to fields if you want to select any of the column you can exclusively tell that i want to select equal to and over here you need to specify the column name for example if you want to grab the information for title email if you remember we have we have a field called email batch then level of knowledge so this is our graph query to get the information from the event registration list so copy this one and let's run it make sure that you should close this one so copy this code and go to the graph explorer come over here and delete this one paste it and let's run it we did some mistake over here see that it is telling that 404 error that means some resources not found so let me do one thing first we will remove this part of the code and try to run it run query so let's look into the query we are doing some mistake over there and the mistake which we are doing over here is see here we have missed this site so let's grab this one and paste it over here so we need to paste it over here so now we are done with this now let's copy this one 
and go back again to our graph explorer now paste it over here control v run query so now this time it has returned us 200 so let me grab the output from this place copy this one and let's go back to the notepad so that we can analyze it so guys i am into the visual studio code and over here i have created this blank file called t.json and i am going to paste our output over here and you will see that within this output you will find all the data which is being returned by our graph api query and here it is returning all the data but i am not getting most of the data because i think we have done some mistake so let's look into that what mistake it is and in our query we have put an extra s because of that it is not returning these values which we have requested so let me run it again and this time i am going to copy this one and go back to our visual studio code delete this one and paste the latest response paste it over here now let's go up and let's verify from the up and over here you will see that it is returning us all the value which we have requested we have requested id we have requested title email batch level of knowledge so all these are returning and all these values we are getting so now let's proceed for the so guys now we have seen that how to create the graph query using graph explorer one thing you notice that in any of the query whichever product which you are using for example if you are using the query for planner if you are clicking on this particular get query then you will see it over here it is hitting the single endpoint and that is what i referred on that time when i was explaining the graph api overview if you remember this diagram where i mentioned about it is going to be one unified url from which you can access all the resources of the micro Microsoft 365 and this is what this URL is if you look into this and this is the URL it is going to be the same for all the resources which is existing within the Microsoft 365 umbrella so on this note I am stopping over here in the next session we will take our example at the next level we will use the SPE editor and we will use our designed query whichever the query which we have designed in this session that we will use it for service layer implementation using graph API so guys see you in the next session till then bye bye take care